Hello and welcome into End on a Make, where tonight I just wanted to talk a little bit about Russell Westbrook. Uh, he tied history tonight with Oscar Robertson bec to become uh, one of the all-time NBA leaders in triple doubles with his 181st in his career. Uh, he did it to help push the Wizards late past the Pacers in overtime, which was a game that Bradley Beal left early with what looked like a lower leg injury. Uh, the team said pretty quickly after that they're going to evaluate him again tomorrow, do some further testing to try to determine the severity of it. But really, this is this is just a chance to talk all about Russell Westbrook because earlier this season, it did not look good. <laughs> it looked like he was, you know, he was past his prime. It looked like he had lost the the physicality and the athleticism that had made him such a star. And, you know, they were struggling. The Wizards were struggling. It looked like they might have gotten the bad end of the trade that they made with, with Houston that sent John Wall to Houston and brought Westbrook back to pair up with Bradley Beal. And, you know, I was early on with how good John Wall looked right out of the gate. I was very much on the side of, like, hey, maybe the Wizards should have just held on to John Wall. Just to see, you know, what would happen with him and him healthy again and Beal with that that repaired friendship. But since, I don't know, since like two, three months into the season, Westbrook has been at another level. And it's really unlocked a lot of, of potential in the Wizards. Uh, he did come out himself early in the season and say that, you know, those early struggles were in large part because he wasn't healthy. And... They had their two-week shutdown uh, due to COVID. They had, I think it was like two weeks, and they missed a ton of games early on. And it was kind of like, oh, well, it looks like, you know, this is just going to be how it goes for the Wizards this year. And he came out after that and said, I feel healthy now. And that's something a lot of athletes say, so I don't think people really put a lot into it. Uh, that's, you know, that's a that's a popular thing for athletes to say. It's like, I feel better than ever. My body feels great. I finally feel healthy. You know, it's taken a while, but I'm back to where I want. And so it's some variation of that. So to hear him say that, it was kind of like, okay, cool. And people were, you know, waiting to see it on the court. And since then, all he has done is secure that he will average a triple-double for the fourth time in his career for a season. The only other person to do that was Oscar Robertson, who did it once. So this will be the fourth time. And I read something that said if Westbrook goes – zero points, zero rebounds, zero assists for the rest of the year, he will still have that triple-double average. He also is now the only player with multiple 20 rebound, 20 assist games as well. And as a guard, the rebounding is insane. Like, the uh, the rebounding ability, I know a lot of people like to say he's stat padding and, and chasing rebounds and boxing his own teammates out to get them. But to be a point guard, being able to grab and battle for that many rebounds a game is is undeniable. Like when you think of league leaders and rebounds, you think of like, you know, the centers. You think of Gobert, you think of uh, Embiid, you think of Miles Turner, you think of Anthony Davis, LeBron, you think of the bigger players. You don't think, or Andre Drummond, I think, was the one who led it for a few years now. But you don't think of Russell Westbrook, like you don't think of a guard, but he's always right there. He's always in the top, you know, five of of rebounding for the league and assists as well. He's always up there. And, you know, throughout the season, he they have had their share of of struggles at times, uh, especially, especially specifically is what I was trying to say. One of those two uh, specifically when it comes to his shot selection. So a lot of the times, if his shot's not falling, he's still putting up, you know, his shots. He's still getting his shots. But if he's not getting to the line and he's not getting to the rim, then it can really be a hindrance. Uh, there was a game this week, though, that kind of not made me think differently because I do, I, I do really like him. I have always liked him a lot. He's one of my absolute favorite players to watch. But he had a game earlier this, this week where he had eight shots on the night. I think he finished with like 15 points. I think it was the 2020 game, actually. And he finished with 15 points and 20, 20 rebounds, 20 assists. And he took eight shots, and that's incredible. If he starts to you know, become that selective with his shots and just picks teams apart with his playmaking ability, 
alongside a weapon like Bradley Beal, who can create his own shot and then also create shots for everybody, like that is a very good offensive pairing. And that is a pairing that can lift the ceiling of a lot of teams. And so to me, it kind of makes me rethink Russ's entire, like what the back half of his career could be. Because a lot of people were saying, you know, once the athleticism's gone for him, then that's it. He's going to be done. He'll be exposed. He'll be done. And that's that. And that dynamic of seeing him only attempt eight shots, but still get, you know, the assist and the rebound numbers, still get a triple-double in that game even, just kind of shows me that he's willing to make those sacrifices. He's willing to make those plays. And that's a huge asset for the Wizards to have. I'm disappointed that they don't have Denny Advia or Thomas Bryant. Uh, those guys are both out with injury because I think this team at full strength could be a lot of fun. And I think if they were healthy and didn't have as many issues, that they probably would be more comfortably in the playoffs. I believe tonight they secured home court for the play-in tournament, but I think they could like be a top six East team with how inconsistent some of those teams in the, the middle of the field have been. Ultimately, though, I don't really want to go too far into that. I just want to celebrate Russell Westbrook because that's a dude who absolutely deserves it. And something I keep thinking about, too, is he'll probably, you know, he's going to pass Oscar Robertson this season, probably the next game. And then I started thinking about, you know, how many more triple doubles, like what's he going to finish with? It's probably safe to assume that he'll get to 200 career triple doubles. Uh, sometime next season, unless they go on like a really deep playoff run. But I would assume that that he'll probably get there next season. And then after that, you know, he's just going to be essentially setting the bar. And it's really made me wonder about how he's going to be remembered. I've really thought a lot about, like, is he going to be one of those dudes where people say, yeah, he was really good, but he never got the ring. Or is this type of, like, are the historic numbers that he's putting up going to be enough for people to you know pay their respects to him if he doesn't get that ring is it going to be like a Barkley situation where it's always you know you always have someone there to be like hey well I have a ring so listen to what I have to say or is it going to be something where we're like this dude did stuff that no one else has ever done or that only Oscar Robertson has ever done and when you're on a list with that with that name with Oscar Robertson you can know that you did pretty well at the highest possible level. Um, and so I just, I don't know. Like, I would like to think that it's clear, just based on his on-court accomplishments already, that he is a, a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer. And that's tough because I know a lot of people, basically everybody gets into the NBA Hall of Fame, it seems, nowadays. Uh, I know a couple other Hall of Fames are a little more selective, it seems. So I'm sure he'll get in, but I know there's going to be that debate of like, well, he doesn't have a ring, so how good all time can he be? Uh, Scott Brooks was asked for that question earlier this week. He was obviously the coach in Oklahoma City, and now he's the Wizards coach. And he said he thinks Russ is the, the second greatest point guard ever. He said it goes Magic Johnson, Russell Westbrook. And his reasoning was because Russ does things that no one else can do. And that's a pretty fair statement. I know there are going to be people that say Curry. I know there's going to be people that say, you know, who whoever else. But I think he deserves his spot in that conversation just because we've never seen sustained performance like this from him. Like, when healthy, he's almost basically a guaranteed walking triple-double. And that's an incredible accomplishment. And I just hope that after a year or two of all the – you know, oh, Westbrook's washed, he's overpaid, he might be the worst contract in the league, all of that, I hope he gets a chance to soak in appreciation from the fans, because tonight was a historic night, when he passes Oscar, it's going to be a historic night too, and I just hope it's an instance, you know, where he gets the respect and acknowledgement he deserves, that's everything I got, uh, let me know please your thoughts on Russ in the comments, um, and, and you know, last thing too, I'm recording this on Saturday night, so tomorrow is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms out there who work incredibly hard and do unbelievable things that I could never comprehend or fathom. Um, all the mothers out there, nothing but love and nothing but the best. Enjoy your day.